it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm working on a little objective here um, for holiday season um, in-person show holiday market that I'm doing. And I just posted a video a little bit ago of a traveler's notebook that I made. Um, and I'd like to have a few of them at this show. So I'm working on my little 10 journal assembly line today. Um, so I'm basically going to make 10 unique but the same kind of formula pages. Um, for the 10 journals. So I'll show you my little assembly line here. This is it. They're, they're a little different. So we have what you've seen probably several times we make these collage master board covers. I've got a couple of these hungry hungry caterpillar covers. I'm not sure what else I'm going to do with them yet. They're, they're probably not finished but there's two of them. Um, I have one of my floral fabric collage covers. This is another of the uh, master board couple more master board. I know I'm kind of not really in frame that easily right now, but you get the drift. Here's another of my botanical collage. Yeah. And then this one, I'm not using this cover for this. This is um, a free form yarn stitched cover that I made a while back in a video, but it's a little bit too small for the size of the traveler's notebook, but I'm just using it to hold um, my existing finished pages. I have another slow stitch cover that I'm working on for that last one. So um, that's what's happening today. So let me get this out of the way. I'm just going to grab my my idea book here because I have kind of a recipe for what I want to do. So for the first page, um, we're going to do a fabric and lace collage um, tab at the bottom, I think. Hold on. Um, no, a fabric collage at the bottom with lace and some hand stitching. Okay. I may change that up a little bit and not actually do hand stitching. We'll see. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Though it would give me an opportunity to use some vintage buttons. So I'm just going to get this out of the way. A couple things here before I get started. Okay. So next to me, out of view of you, I have like um, a scrap basket that has paper and a scrap basket that has fabric. So I'm going to cut... 10 um, little bits of fabric to collage with and then I'm going to start adding them to my pages so oh this is not the scissors for this job here we go so it's kind of a nice morning I have a little bit of time to work because the kiddos are with their dad out playing Ten of these. Uh, I figured I was making stuff anyway, so I might as well just turn on the camera and if you wanted to make along with me you can parts of this might be kind of like slow to watch but six One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need two more. One. Two. So that'll be one of the fabric collage bits. And I think I have. Give me one second. Um... Yes, I have some strips here. I might even have some pre-cut squares. Let me double check. I have a bit of a fabric mound situation over here. Um, <laughs> uh, 
I also have this bag of yo-yos, but I tend not to really like how yo-yos look by themselves without doing a bunch of stitching on top, and they're a little bulky, so I don't think I'll use those. Okay. You know what, for time's sake, I'm just going to cut some bits off these strips. So, a little green would look good with maybe this one. And a bit of this blue floral with this one. I'm not big on the brown gingham with this particular blend of fabrics. That could be good. I'm just going to do them all a little bit different because I don't want them to be too, too much the same. would be nice with this one I think one more one more to go I think yeah oh no two more okay there we go Okay, I'm going to grab some bits and bobs that I would want to stitch down with this, so just give me two seconds. Okay, I have returned and I have things to work with. So let's just get all these things here. I have laces to the side, I have other fabrics, whatever I'm going to need. Um, so the first thing that I want to do with this page, actually I'll do the I'll do the embellishments first. That would make a little more sense. So let's start with this one. I like this. I like this. I'm going to use for simplicity's sake because it's right here. Um, probably this green thread. So let's thread a needle. This is where some of the slow work is going to come in. So if you don't have a little project with you, I recommend getting one. Do some slow stitching, do some collage, do something fun and just hang out. Okay. I have to do a bunch of chores today. Well, a bunch of errands. Um, I have to do donations to the thrift store because my ongoing mission to clean out huge swaths of my house is continuing so that will happen all right maybe this like this and then I got some of these little crochet flowers I think they're really cute they're not too bulky they flatten down nicely so that could be good on there I think ouch I always poke myself with like needles it's just this like ongoing conundrum Maybe a little bit of lace just for some texture here. Here we go. And I'll probably come back in and add a button or two. Um, yeah, so I have to do some donating to our local animal shelter thrift store. I have some um, supplies that I need to donate there and I have other stuff too that has to go and I'll probably do a little tiny bit of thrifting because why not and then I think it's supposed to rain today but as with most days I'm going to take my chances and probably go out and do something kind of fun with the kidlets let's add this coppery or brass button it's a brass button um, Hold on, let me fix the camera so it's a little 
I'm working a little closer to myself. I'll try not to get my, <laughs> my shirt in here or my dress. Yeah, so this is a bit of a finicky page of the, the overall book that I'm making, but it's fun. I love doing little bits of stitching here and there. I'm actually stitching about, I don't know, 10 different things right now for different projects, but I'm also taking a break because I just want to do a little prep for these um, fun shows that I'm going to be taking, well, show that I'm taking part in. I'm only doing, I think, one holiday market, just a little one. It's just my way of kind of easing myself a little bit back in, but not taking a lot of big risks or anything. So, and it's one that I haven't done before in a new community of people that I haven't met before. Um, creatively speaking so I'm looking forward to it okay so there's one collage almost done here one more I remember learning to sew in like I think they called the class when I was in elementary school. It was home ec. Uh, yeah, home economics or domestics is sometimes called in some schools. And there was always this rule of like three, like when you're, um, you're stitching on a button or you're knotting something off, you always do like three knots or three, three loops to secure it properly. Okay, so there's collage number one, and the idea with this is to just add it right to the bottom here, like so. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac to attach it because it's just a really reliable way to make sure it's not going to move. Um, there we go. Just gonna go around all the edges of the fabric. And a couple more lines through the middle here and onto the bottom fabric to the edges. Okay. I think I'll do it right there. Okay. One down, nine to go. How cute is that? <laughs> now with this piece of paper though, in order to finish, I think this whole side of it, um, there is a little bit of writing on the top. And I think instead of covering it, like I was thinking of doing, I'm actually just gonna give it a chop and make the page ever so slightly shorter, which is totally fine. There we go. Okay, so one, next, let's do this one. So we have some green and I think this would kind of look nice crossing it. I need to re-thread my needle. Lots of needle threading in this video. <laughs> Hopefully not too painfully slow. I recently learned, and I can't remember who who told me this. It might have been actually um, Anne Brooke. There's a right side and a wrong side to sewing needles because when they are punched, like in the factory where they're made, one side is like convex and the other is concave, and it's like the convex side, like the punched inside, is. Or sorry, the concave side, the punched inside is like where you want to thread your needle. So if you're ever trying to thread a needle and it seems like for some reason it just doesn't want to go in, try the opposite side. I think I'm going to add this. I really like it there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to go in right through the back of the flower through both fabrics. That will be my starting point for stitching it on. And it will also attach everything together. going to stitch it from the back like so. It's a little bit faster to just kind of whip stitch. Oops. 
This thread likes to tangle. I totally forgot about that. It's, it's like vintage, um, but very strong vintage thread. Polyester thread. Okay. All right, so that's that. Then maybe I will add a little green button as well here. I'm going to be sad when this year is over to be finished with the Anne Brooke Tags Challenge. Um, she's doing another challenge to make like a bunting for next year and I'm not sure if I'm going to do it or not. I don't know. It's on her Patreon. Um, I think it would be about like, I don't know, not that expensive to do. The only trouble is that she's in England, I think, or Europe anyhow, um, and so everything is in pounds so it's a little pricier for um, those of us here in Canada. <laughs> be gold would be good there, yeah. She did say she'd still be posting to Instagram though, so people who wanted to just kind of follow along afterward could do so. And I might do it, but not as a bunting type thing, as a flag. I might do it maybe again as tags or something else. Or I might even try to come up with my own 52 challenges for the year. Not necessarily stitching related, but maybe something else. Or maybe I won't. I'll just follow, follow along into something different entirely. Who knows? Um, that's good. I like that one. I will re-tie this so it'll be ready for the next one. So this one... Fabri-Tac is kind of a pain in the neck. It's a great glue, but it takes so long to get the bottle going. Okay. There we go. Right like that. doing um, a fun science experiment this week with my daughter. It's part of our homeschooling stuff. It's um, We're doing a mold garden. <laughs> so we read a book last night about that sort of introduces the concept of mold and it's like for kids and it's um, a series of books called Zoe and Sassafras about this little girl and like these magical creatures that come for help to this little barn in the family's backyard and um, so in this in this particular book it's like this monster comes and he needs help because his fur keeps turning moldy and so it's really cute and uh we are going to do this little experiment with um, growing our own mold on a piece of bread that we spray with water and keep it inside a plastic bag. Um, so yeah, that should be kind of fun. <laughs> Although last night was funny. I was reading. I always read to my daughter at bedtime and like we stayed up a little later last night. We also had a really busy day. We, she had, um, in the morning, my kids go to like a play, a play area, and then they play for a couple of hours. And then we went for like a four and a half kilometer walk yesterday in the afternoon to the woods near our house. And then um, they had a full day of playing because it was actually her fifth birthday yesterday. And so she was kind of tuckered out at bedtime. And I guess I was too, because at one point I was reading the story and it's a chapter book. So, you know, it should take a couple of days to read, but like 
I often finish them in, in one evening if we're really into them. And so she said, Mom, you know, do you want to finish this tomorrow? Because I'm tired. And I said, OK, or, you know, we only have a, li a little bit to go. I could try to do you want to just try to finish it up so that we get it done? And then she said, well, yeah, but I think you're tired, too. You keep falling asleep while you're reading. And I had no idea. I was like totally like drifting in and out or something. <laughs> Uh, that's very funny I'm trying to decide what button to use and oh, that's a nice one that yellow that would be good this is one of those fabric backed kind of buttons that you have to stitch through the backing of the fabric so many vintage buttons okay one more to create a knot here. Here we go. Doing this pin to myself. And I made a strawberry shortcake for her yesterday at her, that was her birthday cake request. So it turned out very nice. I think I have most things ready for the birthday party we're having on the weekend because my son's birthday is next week, my daughter's birthday is yesterday. So we try to do a little party in the middle for right now while they're little and it's nice so we're just having our family here we go and my in-laws have been staying with us they're staying for a couple of weeks which is really nice. The kids love having them here and so do we. My husband's mom is um, always keeping herself busy cleaning all the things in my house that I never have time to clean, <laughs> which she doesn't have to do, but despite cajoling, she wants to, I guess. So I think it's just a matter of like, that's how people stay busy. Some people like to do those kind of things. Me, I would rather be doing this. Okay, so I've got these nice, these are from um, Qatar. My girlfriend um, lived in Qatar and she used to always bring me these beautiful things um, from Qatar. She would ship me these lovely things. So, okay, we need to re-thread the needle. Oops. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to finish this entire page today, but I have a feeling I'm only going to finish this collage bit during this video. If I finish all of these, we'll see. I might. But I've kind of designed two or three different, um, almost like a recipe page for creating a, a traveler's notebook or a small journal. Um, like what to do with each page so you can have kind of a nice little formula for recreating the same style of journal that just kind of goes nicely with um, the amount of pages that you've chosen and the techniques that you use so it works for me because I, I don't have to like constantly think about what I want to do on every single page spread I mainly just do that with these smaller journals for the larger custom kind of, or not custom, but like the themed journals that, that I make, um, the larger books. I always, I just go page to page kind of with a few loose plans in mind. Okay, there's that. A little wooden button up here maybe. hoping the weather is kind of nice today. I have to sort out all of the winter clothes soon. All the jackets and the hats and the mitts and the snow pants and scarves and 
so on and so forth. And then today I also have to go to um, get a bunch of like plastic bins to organize or baskets to organize our our laundry room. My husband uses it a little bit like a dumping ground sometimes for things that he's working on. And I get it. I think we all do that sometimes. We all have that junk drawer kind of mentality from time to time. But I really want to clean it up. <laughs> it's kind of reached that, uh, this is a little out of hand stage. I don't think it'll take too long, like an afternoon of just like sorting things. I'm just going to make a bunch of labeled baskets so that there's like a clear place to put things. It's mainly his tools because we, um, our garage is a little jam packed full of things right now because we've been packing boxes and we have bikes and canoes or not canoes, uh, kayaks and all sorts of like outdoor life kind of stuff, a snow blower and lawnmower and all that kind of stuff in there so our garage gets a little jammed up from time to time we've been meaning to build this workbench and shelving for all the tools and things but then we're kind of of the mind while we're moving why should we you know bother let's just try to get it cleaned up and packed up so that it doesn't um interfere with the overall plans so now what happens is we end up keeping the tools that we use from time to time as well as those that we use from like one time for some specific project that they all end up in the laundry room and we have all this shelving in the laundry room but nothing to organize in so I need to change that because I figure I don't want to like harp about it if I'm not going to do something to help, like make a logical place for things. Cause oops, cause I think a lot of the time when let's just put this here, actually a lot of the time when people, you know, argue over things like house kind of stuff or whatever, it's like mainly because there just isn't a solution to the problem. <laughs> like usually when it's cleaning related and clutter related, you know, like not cleaning up after oneself and that kind of thing, it's often because like there just isn't a logical place to put things. So I try to make sure that not just for my own self in my studio, but that everybody has like a place that they can have their things to call home. Um, because it's hard to clean when you don't have like an organized system. How do we want this? Do we want like that? No, this in the back. This like this, I think. Okay. Just gonna knot this again. Hands are sticky. And I think I want to put a little bit of pink lace on this one then potentially a yellow button like this yeah so every day my daughter and I we study some kind of animal and so <laughs> I was flipping through my Instagram this morning and you know how sometimes you get things like recommended to you. I got this really gross like thing recommended to me of like a doctor removing a bot fly larva from a man's upper lip. It was so gross. So my daughter, of course, saw it and she's like, mom, what is that? So I told her, you know, about bot flies and how they, you know, they use mosquitoes to drop their larva off on other living things to, you know, <laughs> continue their family, uh, their family line. And so she's like, oh, can we watch a video about it? So we watched a couple of videos about it um, this morning, one of which was like, I forget the name of the YouTube channel. It was like um, the Jungle Diaries, maybe. Yeah, the Jungle Diaries. So this guy went to the Amazon and he got a botfly larva in his back. And instead of like most of us and panicking and, you know, getting it 
at the hospital going and dealing with it, he actually allowed it to grow a little because he's a scientist and he ended up going to a museum uh, like where they have a whole like massive fly ex exhibit and uh, he spoke with like the entomologist there and they talked all about the bot fly. So what was just a grody yucky experience, we turned it into kind of an educational one about parasites and But I'm pretty happy that bot flies only live in the tropics. I don't want to have them here. Ugh. Sorry to those of you who live in the tropics. I hope all the bot flies leave your town immediately. Okay. I'll pick up this needle because I know I will definitely lose it if I don't. Come on, slowpoke. I totally understand why I always see Pam at the paper outpost leaving her her glue upside down in an old water bottle because then you don't got to wait for it to get down to the bottom. Okay. And you could also like hand stitch this whole collage onto the paper if you wanted to, but it would poke more holes through the paper and it would take a little longer. So I kind of like the glue down method because fabri a very strong glue. Probably it would make things a little stronger even than um, stitching it on. There we go. Okay. So a little blue. I kind of think I'm going to put this one on the top of the black, actually, like so. Then, I don't know if we want to use more of this purple. Hmm. Yeah, actually, I like that. That's nice. this on. So it's quite cozy in the morning watching all of the people who are making holiday journals. I made um, like 10 little Krampus themed notebooks for the Krampus market show that I'm doing. Um, just kind of simplified notebooks. I posted a picture of one on my Instagram. They're like nice little stocking stuffers. And I got this really cute design of like a Krampus cat that I bought on um, Redbubble from a designer. And like it really looks cute on the, um, on the journals. I just don't have time to like paint designs myself so it's nice that you can buy like other artists work to be able to use in your design work. I think sometimes I think about like oh I'd love to do some illustration design and you know license it for sale but you've got to kind of pick your your stuff you want to do um you know you don't have time for everything. So right now I just feel like I really feel like making, I just really making like paper art, like journals and ephemera. And I feel like doing some art yarn spinning and maybe some textile art, but that's about all I feel like doing right now. And I have a lot of projects that are languishing in the background too, that I'm not getting done, but I go through these phases and I think they're sort of seasonal. Like I, whoops, I feel like working on different things in different seasons. And I think 
in the winter time I'll probably want to cozy up with more knitting and crochet and stitching and that kind of thing. But I think I'll still continue doing a lot of paper stuff because I'm just really, really liking doing it. This is also going to be a bit of a winter of adventures. I want to teach my daughter to skate and um, might get her into some cross country or snowshoeing. And I'm also going to see if I can get her enrolled in like um, sprites. It's like the precursor to like brownies and see how that would work during this whole world situation. I think I would totally go for like community um, style events. Definitely like once kids can get um, vaccinated, but like even before that, even if it's on Zoom, I think it would be good to just have a bunch of kids kind of engaging together and laughing and that kind of thing. I've also always wanted to do like when I was a kid, I actually didn't attend any kind of formalized like girl guides or anything like that. I just I don't know. I just didn't. Um, and ever since like I used to um, be in a relationship with someone who had a younger sister who when she was a kid, like we got along really well because I guess I'm kind of a child at heart and I was like younger than all of the other adults around her and I always wanted to like involve her in things and I just I've always liked kids and so from the time I was a teenager um she was in like brownies and things and so I would always volunteer to like do stuff like go be a chaperone on her school trips or this or that and um it was a lot of fun and it made me want to learn about like being like a brown owl like the, <laughs> those kind of cute things like be one of the mentoring adults in one of those like groups I think that would be a lot of fun this page okay I think I'll do my collage on this page because this is like a copper or sorry a, a metallic black um print of silverware I don't know if you can tell that from here but I'm gonna have to make this page kind of interesting okay so I think I will do this so yeah maybe I could get an opportunity like that with my own daughter to get to do to be a brown owl but maybe there's a lot of people who want to do that so maybe it's hard to get that kind of a position we'll see <laughs> Getting this fixed down here. Okay. And I think this green button maybe here. Oops. Where here? Here. Yeah, there's good. And if you're worried about bulk in your journal, um, don't use these like stand up style buttons, just use flat ones. I'm not worried though, because, um, these journals I'm making are going to be like ephemera stuffed, bulky traveler's notebooks with not a ton of pages. So that's a nice thing. You have like some options to create some different, um, textures. Okay, I need more thread. Come on. 
Oops, I missed it. Eek. It doesn't help to have little bits of glue on your fingers when you're trying to thread a needle. There we go. I probably could use one of my 500 needle threaders that I have lying around here in the studio. But what challenge would that be? <laughs> okay, and I wanted to add one more button, I think, here. Just going to re knot this for the next one. This is actually going a little quicker than I thought it would. like I don't know what it is I just want to ink this page a bit it's a little bit of purple messy kind of ink because then I feel like it will just go together better exciting thing is I've been trying to get a pair a specific pair of moxie roller skates for like a year now and I've been on a waiting list and I sign up and then I get an email saying they're available like every few months and then by the time I get to the website they're gone and I finally finally got them so they're on their way to me and I know it's winter time but I will be able to use them next year and I will be able to roller skate around my dining room a little bit this year. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. And roller skates have become one of those funny commodities that are hard to come by because it's another one of those hobbies that a lot of people have picked up during like lockdown and that kind of thing. Um, if you don't know on YouTube, um, nerd burger, nerd burger J, I think is her, um, her channel name. It might just be nerd burger though, but, um, she is an awesome, like just an awesome person. She's Australian and she, um, collects like, vintage toys and like lots of media she's really into comic books and um she got into roller skating over the pandemic and i have absolutely loved watching her um learn entirely to roller skate and um just see her like you know she's doing all these tricks and she's become like amazing and i'm so like stoked for her to like see her having so much fun because you know it's fun when you like follow a YouTuber when they are doing certain things. And I think you're, you know, you're experiencing their challenges with them when they share them with you. And, um, I think so the social aspect of this whole situation, it appears that it probably deeply affected her and certainly her hobbies and things, just because some of them are similar to my hobbies too, like going thrift shopping and, you know, collecting toys and doing social things. And, um, you know, it's, it's a little harder. So it's great to see when people like find some way to pull themselves up from the hard stuff like that. And they're able to learn a new skill or have a fun new hobby. It's nice when that happens. 
so that's my one like people are great kind of thing and then I have another I might as well share with you on this one but I had like an experience the other day that made me think I mean this isn't something that's like a revelation to me it's just kind of like a reminder that um, there's a lot of things that we all stress about that are small when there's a lot of big things in the world going on and that you never know what people are dealing with so where am I going with this story so I had a dentist appointment a couple of weeks ago for a cleaning and when I got there and I don't think I shared this story yet but if I did I apologize to anyone who's heard it um, it was about like a half an hour delayed like I just sort of sat waiting and I, I was okay I was reading a magazine whatever and um, so the girl at the counter um, at the office she kept apologizing and offering me like coffee or water and I said I'm okay I'm fine so you know I waited and waited and then um, I finally got in got my cleaning everything was good and then it was the end of the day it was time for the dentist office to close so I like the all the staff were leaving as I was waiting to kind of do the whole you know pay and insurance submission and all that kind of thing you do at the end of an appointment and um, so everyone had left but her and I could tell that it was, you know, she was having a problem of some kind, um, getting something to work, probably the insurance submission, because it can be difficult, the systems that a lot of, um, a lot of like medical people have to use to submit their claims, you know, so that you don't have to pay up front, they can just submit it directly to your insurance. That's why I think some places don't do it because it can be kind of a pain to deal with. So she was obviously struggling and I saw her like, you know, she was apologizing again and offering me things. And I again was just like, ah, I'm fine. Um, <laughs> and so she had called I think like her manager or one of her colleagues and she was like really trying to get this to work and she is asking me some questions about like you know when the last time I was there and that kind of thing so I just kind of like I was just in a really chill mood that day and I think I, I usually am when it comes to stuff like this where people are just you can tell they're just trying to like figure something out they're not like expressly making you you know wait or something so um I was reading some book on my phone um <clears throat> and finally she got it all sorted out and then she sort of like had a moment as she was like as I was just kind of saying like oh you know you'll see me again I I am here frequently for two kind of things because I I have to take a little extra care of my teeth. I, I think I have some bad tooth genetics. So I always joke that I'm a tooth problem child. And so, you know, I was joking with her and she's like, you know, I am so sorry for your weight today. I'm sure you can tell that I'm new. And I said, oh, you know, we're all new at something. <laughs> There's a lot of things I'm definitely new at. So she said, you know, this is just, this is my first job coming back, you know, into, you know, my life again. And um, I didn't really know what, she meant by that but then I could tell she was about to kind of get into something and so she said um I lost my my two-year-old son about eight months ago and um so this is my first kind of like venturing back into the world a little bit and you know trying to get myself together and you know I just felt like this uh, I don't know like you feel this breathless kind of kick when when you hear something like that and um you know she was very very vulnerable to me to tell me all of that and I, I was just kind of heartbroken for her I, I really I really cannot imagine um how that would feel right how all of that would feel so um after she told me I just kind of you know breathlessly told her you know how sorry I was and that I hope that you know she was finding some healing and finding herself and getting back into like her 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 work experience and stuff and she said yeah you know I I was in a good position like I was in a good place in my career I was in college and everything was okay and then this happened and you know it's really set me back and I said well you know we we definitely often have different things that can set us back in life and you know I think that a lot of times it's small things but I think for you you know you're showing some incredible like ability to you know heal and and move despite unimaginable pain so give yourself all the credit you can you can muster you know you're fine you're doing fine and you're gonna learn this and you're gonna excel at it like so it kind of gave me 
renewed perspective about like you know we often hear the or, or see videos and we hear the jokes about people acting like what they call karens or something which i don't like the use of that name because i have a couple of friends named karen who are like wonderful and would never act that way <laughs> but i also realize that it's like it's not that big of a deal it's not like a, a huge discrimination thing or anything it's just a kind of weird social media thing um but yeah like i I, it, it was kind of like 101 reasons to not act like a jerk to people because you don't know what they're dealing with. Um, and if they're not outwardly trying to like just be obnoxious, you know, just, I guess, think about your level of patience. And if it's waned over this time, I, I get it. But if possible, you know, just try to like give people a little bit because we're all in this together, as Red Green would say. If you're Canadian and you know, you might know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I ended up going, I had to get a filling, because like I said, teeth. Um, and she was there again, and it looked like she was really uh, doing good. She didn't have any problems. I don't think she necessarily remembered me um, from the, the visit before or our discussion, but I had a really quick, she processed very quick this time. And so, yeah, it's all good. And even if it hadn't been, it still would have been all good. <laughs> Although my experience going to... <laughs> A few other places this week have not been as inspiring. Couponers, price matchers. You're not my people. <laughs> Especially when there are a hundred people in line behind you. And you're not even an organized couponer price matcher. And you're sharing a cell phone with your friend. Going back and forth. Looking things up. One at a time. Trying to price match them. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Um, and then like I had to, I think I mentioned in one of my last videos, we had to renew some of our identification because over this period of time, a lot of government services were just kind of closed. So they've just accepted expired driver's licenses and health cards and things like that. So now though, they want everyone to start, you know, renewing them. So we went to do that and, um, Ah, the personalities you come across. There was like this one man who had like an original old like suitcase with him from like the seventies. And he had like his name and address on a sticky note taped to it, which kind of cracked me up because it was just like an eclectic, funny thing. Um, innocent enough. Right. But then like he was patient for a while, but then he just started to get like really impatient, you know, like started making comments about, people like how they were working not working fast enough and I think he was kind of egged on by these really annoying people in front of him I'll get to them in a minute but like he was totally fine until like I feel like their energy just like seeped into him <laughs> and he just became like really impatient so um he was he was standing in line and there was another like there was one like kiosk government kiosk with an employee working who she was only there to do one thing like to deal with car dealers getting like new um license like plates for like new car sales so she was there at a kiosk but she wasn't helping anybody in the lineup because it said dealers only right like so it wasn't for the public to do anything and so then you know he started to bark at me about like why you know there's not not like there's that many dealers why isn't she helping us this is ridiculous and, da, da, da. and I just said well you know I think we should think about what we don't know maybe her job isn't the same as theirs it seems like she has a much simpler simplified job I don't think she has access to the same computer system that these other people do so you know probably she just has a different job I don't think she would just you know sit there also she looked very busy she was doing a ton of paperwork I could see her like with these stacks and stacks of paper that she was having to do some kind of government administrative thing with so you know <sighs> yeah but um in front of him were these two people that like I don't know if they were I guess they were probably a couple and they were like 
just being really weird with each other. Like there's a certain kind of guy personality type. It's, it's always a guy whenever I see it. So I'm not trying to discriminate. I'm just saying this is my experience. It's usually a guy who likes to constantly like, like it's like a playful fighting thing they do where they're always like smacking or pun like light punching or, you know, like he kept like snapping her mask off her face or he would like flick the, um, the side of her mask, the elastic off, which made me very uncomfortable because first of all, um, you know, I'm really, <laughs> really rigid about mask wearing. And when people aren't wearing masks, I don't want to be around them. But also in this place, um, you know, people are getting their official driver's license photos and stuff. So you have to take your mask off to do that. And you're right out in the middle of all these other people when you do it. And, um, there was already one guy there who had like his mask below his nose hanging you know under his top lip and he was like chit-chatting with some woman and ugh, I was just kind of giving him this look like you're so annoying because honestly this is my pet peeve I, I can't deal with these people who act like wearing a mask is the end of the world so um it was like that was going on and then the two of them were like aggressively like fighting with each other kind of in a joking manner but like I could kind of tell she seemed to be like getting annoyed with it but it looks like something that she often tolerates from him and ugh, yeah goodness me if any men somehow stumble upon this video don't do that don't do that it's really annoying none of us want to be hit even jokingly none of us want to be messed around with like that it's like so frustrating to watch and also to feel kind of helpless that you can't like just pull somebody out of a situation like that and it's also very telling about um what they are potentially capable of so red flag run run ladies or gents if you're dating a guy like that or a woman like that run because you never know um okay so those are my PSAs for the day oh I have one more button I didn't use it that's okay it's not the end of the world so we got all of these done and we're at 49 minutes let me see what the next step is if I can do something else here okay yeah we can do something else so I need to add like a paper, like a paper scrap at the top here for contrast. Because we're going to have like a pocket below, so we want something that's a little bit different from the page. Um, but yeah, I have actually like held myself together this week in several frustrating public situations. So that's a win. Not that I'm like, you know, an aggressive person at all, really. I just, I definitely sometimes do get a little frustrated. And I did say to a woman at a store I went, had to go to the other day, you know, there are people in line behind you because she was giving the cashier the hardest time ever. And the cashier was being so lovely. And basically she bought $28 worth of things that are clearly labeled. Um, the prices are not negotiable. And she started like, once she got her total, she started like making the poor cashier itemize everything, how much it was. And then she would have these strange philosophical moments where she would determine if she was going to pay for it or not. And you know, like 10 minutes of this. And I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm going to start a riot here. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't handle it anymore. I got really tired of her. Mainly, I was just tired of her being mean to the cashier, like questioning the cashier's integrity or something. Like, why? This girl's just trying to do her job. I don't know. If anything, I think that this whole situation has made me way more empathetic to people who work with the public because I have done it myself and it is not easy at all. You never know what you're going to come up against and especially with, you know, having to mandate government policies, you know, um, on top of just dealing with your everyday job stuff that's hard, like... Yeah, there's a lot of personalities that we could probably just do without. I need to trim that down one more. There we go. Ah, my 
fingers have reached gluey critical mass. Yuck. Um, this one, I think I will use a bit of this map. Just pulling from my scrap bin. I did a little bit of um, collaging with my daughter yesterday. I'm trying to get my scrap bin used up a little bit. This project is actually quite good for using up scraps. I think I'll probably fill this here. first. Oh, I gotta check the width. So we don't want it to be so wide that it um, goes into the seam of the book. These are nice little maps. I kind of like using maps in traveler notebooks. They're just obviously nice and applicable. Probably just finish these up and then this will be a video. Um, I gotta check my width on this one. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I also noticed that Marguerite Miller has in her Etsy shop next year's um, collage planner book. So I decided to pick it up um, for next year. So I'll probably do the Marguerite Miller challenge weekly next year. It's something kind of fun to do. I've really come into enjoying collage a lot. So oops, there we go. These papers are just end papers. I will use for backings.
two to go. Maybe I will use thicker paper so I think I'm going to use art glitter glue to hold it down. Actually I better tear off my glue page. Oops. here. There. And then, this is fun. Let's use this, some of this. I really love using old yearbooks. Ugh, they're so fun. People were so cute, like, in yearbooks. Everybody is so cute in their yearbook. Just trim this a little to straighten in there. I still remember the, the goofiest picture that I ever took when I was in elementary school for some bizarre reason when I was like, probably like in grade five or something. I think it's grade five. The night, like, or the week before picture day, for whatever strange reason, I decided to shave with my mother's Lady Bic razor my bangs completely off. Why? I don't know. I had like hair past my bum and shaved bangs. And by the time picture day came, my hair, my bangs had grown about this much. So they jutted straight up from the front of my forehead. Like I was trying to lift off some kind of aircraft carrier from my head. Yep, that was me as a kid. A little bit of insight there, folks. And on that embarrassing note, um, I'm done the one side of these pages. They have more work to go. Um, I still have quite a bit of work to do, actually. I need to add um, a little card here and then a piece of ephemera to this side. And then I haven't even done anything on this side yet. So a bit to do, um, a bit to do for sure. So thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have a super fun, great, amazing day. And um, you're on vacation like I am and you're just living it up. And don't forget to subscribe. All my information is down below in the description box. Thanks again for joining me and I'll be back soon with gluey fingers and more stuff to share with you. So take care for now. Bye.